Amen. Every great and godly father is a gift from the heavenly father. And we are thankful for that. Today it's Father Sunday. Would you stand? I'm going to preach a message for our fathers. And I know we have mothers here, young people, but I'm very sure because it's the word of God, it would help us all today. Ngipumaga, there's many father's message that I could preach. I have been preaching every year a father's message, mga kapatid, on this Sunday. Not because I'm a perfect father. <laughs> Not because, mga kapatid, that, uh, you know, I, uh, I was voted the best dad uh, in this church. But because uh, as every father ngipumaga standing, you and I, we are still praying and striving to be the father that God wants us to be. And uh, what could we get and where could we get, mga kapatid, as I should say, where could we get those instruction and those instruction only could come from the word of God. And so I pray it will bless us as we look in our verse today. We're going to read two verses in the Old Testament. And it's our Father's Day message. We're going to be able to skip our uh, series next Sunday on the book of 1 Corinthians. And just encourage all our fathers in this service. Open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 20 verse number 7. And we're going to look at another verse in Psalms chapter 101 verse number 2. And I believe this will be the first time I'll be preaching a Father's Day message on this verses. And so I pray it will be a blessing, a help, and an encouragement to all our fathers and our church family today. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7, if you're there, uh, sa ating mga besita, I believe still we have a Bible. Uh, if we run out of Bibles, we have New Testament Bibles. We still want to give you that and encourage you to read the Word of God and live your life based on it. Proverbs 20, verse 7, together now, let's read, go. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Psalms chapter number 101, verse number 2. Psalms chapter 101, verse number 2. And if you're there, please say amen. amen. Again, let's read together. Our text, Psalms 101, verse number 2. Together now go, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Or when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within mine house with a perfect heart. I like to preach mga patid, a message not just doctrinally, but I like to preach a message mga patid, very practically to be able to help our fathers. Sometimes at church, we preach principles and you go home and you are thinking, how can I apply this to my life? And I encourage you, mga patid, that's always should be the thinking we have when we come to church and listen to the Word of God. How can I apply God's message in my life? And so this morning, I'll be preaching a message that would not, mga patid, uh, make you think, how do you apply this in your heart, in your life? You go home, kay pumaga, prayerfully, that you know where to apply it in your life. So this morning, I'd like to preach a message on Father's Day with the subject, Dads with Integrity. Dads with Integrity. Father... We stand understanding panon nobody among us in this place in your house under this voice that is above the word of God. Panginoon, we come to church not to be religious. We come panginoon not to condemn anyone. We come to church panginoon not to be able to say we're perfect than others. Lord, we come knowing that we're sinners just saved by grace. And Lord, it's your grace that helps us. Your grace that sustains us. Your grace, Panginoon, that is always sufficient in our life. And Lord, today as we celebrate Father's Day, Lord, the principle we're going to listen and hear from the Word of God would also apply, I believe, to every person under the sound of this voice. So I pray now, capture our hearts. I pray in the next 20 minutes, Panginoon, you just allow us to be absorbed in the Word of God. And Lord, leave this place determined, committed to be the person the Father especially, that you would want us to be. So I pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. 
Dads with integrity. Po, the word integrity is a word that we always hear. Uh, I suppose uh, uh, this week I was traveling and nakita ko po sa isang construction company nakalagay, kasi may construction company nakalagay, we serve with excellence and integrity. Now, nung tinignan ko po yun yung sa slogan ng isang construction company, na kanila pong slogan is, We serve with excellence and integrity. Nag-gets ko agad yung excellence. Di ba? Parang kayo, amen. Ano, I mean, dapat talaga, excellence. You know, maganda yung kanilang tayo. It's an excellent, it's a beautiful thing. But I was wondering, uh, in that construction company slogan, why is it that the word integrity is included? We serve with excellence and integrity. And soon enough, um, hindi po ko, wala po ko sa construction company, but I know a lot of people who's in there. I got like, good friends. And so I asked sa kanila, uh, bakit uh, in that construction company, uh, the word integrity is used? And I love what my friend told me, and I was asking yesterday. Sabi niya, see, yung excellence is gonna be very easy to understand because pagka po nagtayo sila, makita mo maganda. But yung integrity ay ito hindi mo nakikita yung mga nasa pagitan ng wall. Hindi mo nakikita yung pipe ng tubig. Hindi mo nakikita yung electrical wire na dumadaloy kaya may magandang ilaw. Hindi mo nakikita yung mga bakal kung ano ginamit, kung second hand ba yan, or used ba yan, or substandard. Hindi mo nakikita yon. You just see things outside, but they're saying that they're not going to just make it beautiful outside. What's inside is more important than outside and what's inside is quality service. It just means what you see outside is the same inside. And I was praying for a Father's Day's message. And I was preparing to preach on the prodigal son, the father of the prodigal son. I was uh, uh, you know, preach, uh, trying to prepare on uh, the life of Abraham, the father of faith. And I have perfect examples in the Bible about being a father. But I believe God has allowed me to be taken uh, to that focus and preach today on that word, integrity. Dads with integrity. I look up, mga the word integrity is in the sa dictionary and you Google it and you're going to find that the word integrity comes from the root word, integer. Now, sino po rito ang magaling sa mat, tasang kamay? Wala. Ako din, kaya ako nagpastor eh. Uh, now, if you're into ma math, the word integer means whole number. Tama? Wala talaga, matagamat dito lang, wala sumasagot eh. Hindi nyo nila yung integer, no? Uh, okay lang. So, at least patas tayo, amen. Uh, you just Google it. Uh, the word integer means whole number. It means it's whole. It, it does not lack anything. Hindi po yan point something, it's whole numbers. But there's a lot of meaning in, the go in Google that you're gonna find what the word integrity means. But the best definition on integrity is defined by Someone that I use always to love to read this book, C.S. Lewis, is a Christian writer. And I like to look at your screen, and he gives us, I believe, the best meaning of integrity. And he says, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching. And like I said, Mark, I don't want you to go home thinking, how can I apply this in my life? I want us mga to understand that integrity means doing the right thing even if no one is looking. And ngayon bumaga, it's not just, I believe, for fathers. It's for every amen. child yes. of God. Say amen. 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 Ipo, madaling mag paganda ng labas. Magandi pong maganda. Uh, there, there's about this world as I preach ngayon bumaga that they're more interested on the outside. But a lot of people, mga kapatid, are forgetting the inside. And I guess mag, this morning as I preach, and I'm not ready to preach, I'm just giving you some, a, a, a foundation because I'm going to preach five important things 
uh, for fathers to be encouraged and help me pumaga. The danger, mga kapatid, even of religion, is trying just to look outside good and excellent. Trying to have a great service, a program on Sundays. But when we go away from our church and go to our individual homes, and go to our individual lives, it seems that what we say, what we do on Sundays is totally different than what we do and say on Monday to Saturday. And you and I, Ngipumaga, as I say that, we have always a struggle about that. You know why? Because we're not perfect. Uh, we get mad. We get emotional. But the reason why we need something stable in our life and we cannot depend mga kapatid, on our feelings. We cannot depend mga kapatid, to make the right decisions, the right actions mga kapatid, based on our circumstances. We cannot depend to make the right actions, circumstances, mga, uh, and actions, decisions based on other people because all of those are changing. Yeah. 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 I do believe sometimes on Sunday you feel great coming to church. But mamaya you don't feel coming to church anymore. Kaya nga po, ang paglingkod sa Panginoon, hindi pwedeng emotional din. Amen. Amen. Yung paglingkod sa Panginoon, hindi, hindi pwedeng situational din. Just the same with many important things in life. As we, I love church, I love the Word of God, mga kapatid. Because this world teaches us more of the external things. But only the Word of God, through the church that preaches the Word of God, teaches us what's important more than the external things. It is the internal things. And so, allow me, mga kapatid, ngayon bumagod to preach. If you say amen, it's going to be just 10 minutes. If you keep quiet, it's going to be 1 hour and 10 minutes. And so I want us to look at five things to encourage all our fathers especially, but all of us through the Word of God. Like us, mga kapatid, to realize, number one, we're going to have dads, fathers of integrity, number one, then godly dads pursue integrity. Pastor, why do you say pursue? Well, mga kapatid, nobody under the sound of this voice might would say, I'm the perfect person. Nobody. In Bible truth, mga kapatid, no one is a perfect person. We are all sinners. And every sinner, mga kapatid, needs to have a perfect Savior. That's the reason why Jesus Christ is the only Savior because He's the only person who has no sin. Why do we pursue, mga kapatid? Because I guarantee you, in this life, kahit kristyano ka, kahit nagbabasa ka ng Bible, kahit lumaki ka sa simbahan, kahit alam mo ang verses, mga kapatid, there's gonna be always in life, every day, in your work, in your home, in your friends, in your influence, that there's gonna be a something that this world, the devil, the flesh, would challenge that integrity in your life. There's always gonna be a challenge of integrity in your life. Believe you me, mga kapatid, I understand uh, you men, you fathers working outside because I always do a lot of dealings outside myself. And sometimes we tend to make decisions based on situations. As the situation dictates. But my friends, listen to this, situation always changes. Kaya po maraming buhay na hindi stable eh. Because we don't anchor our life, our decision to something that is not changing. And my friends, only God and the Word of God does not change. If you anchor your decision, mga bed, on other person, I guarantee that person is going to change. Friend now, enemy tomorrow. Amen. Yeah. BFF now. Wala na. Next, next, to, next year, DFF na. Yung DFF? Devil friends forever na sila. Dati best friend, naging devil's friend. And alam nyo mga kapatid, ang pinakamatinding kaaway, yung kaibigan mo. Pag naging kaaway mo. Tama, kasi alam lahat ng sekreto mo. Siga. Kaya mga kapatid, ang pinakamagandang kaibigan ng Panginoon. I mean, I'm not going to pursue that rabbit ngayon po umaga. But 
things changes. So what allows us, mga kapatid, to have integrity, especially as fathers, we pursue that, Panginoon. You, you know what, you, what, I know what your word says. I was in church last Sunday. I prayed. I've asked the saints, Panginoon, I pray that what I do on Sundays, what I say on Sundays, what I say to my children is the same I do to myself. If I tell my children to pray, then I pray myself. If I ask my children to come to church, I come to church myself. If I ask them to be a good person, I'm going to be a good person. If I ask them to be godly, I'm going to be godly. My friends, we need to pursue integrity. And all of us, mga kapatid, has that challenge each every day. I mean, hindi ko alam ang kwento ng buhay nyo kasi hindi ko naman kayo ni- ni-stalk. <laughs> the other day, I was with my good friends. Ando kami sa may McKinley. And so, alam yung mga kaibigan ko minsan. Yung mga, kahit kasihan yan, sometimes, you know, they're in the world. And kaya nga, I love always introducing myself. When I, when I talk to a lot of people, a lot of, you know, um, high-profile government people, when I guess you say, I'm a pastor. Yun pa lang, mga kapatid, 90% ng aking integrity, buo na. When I introduce myself, I'm a pastor. 90% napa, napa, na, napagtagumpan na yun kung aking integrity. Yung 10% na lang, depende pag sinalis nila. Ba't may kilala akong pastor? Pwede naman. 10% na lang yun. As we, I tell you, mom, it's a blessing to introduce you. I'm a Christian. I'm saved. I'm a child of God. I tell you, mga kapatid, hindi yan corny. That's something that will help you in your Christian life. Yeah. Eh, gabi na, 11 o'clock na. Siyempre, nag, nagpapapass time yung dalawa. I mean, yung sama na, pamparelax, two bottles. Sila. Ako, Starbucks. Oh, nagpa-picture kami. Eh, yung kaibigan, mabiru yung mga yan eh. Ang nagpa-picture kami, yung kanyang, yung kanyang bote, itinatapa, eh, tinatapa yung Starbucks ko. Para pag nakunan, parang hawa ko din yung, yung bote. Kaya gulo-gulo ko talaga ito, sabi ko. And we were, we were laughing. Bago tinagpa ako, ang tira ka ako, ikaw. But well, they were laughing. But listen, mga kapatid, I'm not telling you, I'm not just trying to just, I'll tell you something in this life. Even your child of God, your integrity will always be challenged. Your morality will always be challenged. Your convictions will always be challenged. Your marriages will always be challenged. Your children may always be challenged. I encourage you today by the grace of God and it's not because of me. All of us, we need, if we're going to have integrity as fathers, as child of God, as members of this church, as a, a child of God, listen, let us pursue integrity. I know sometimes we fail, but bless God. This is why we love the Word of God. We love coming to church. Reminds us who we are, why we're here, and where we're headed. We are here, mga kapatid, by the grace of God. Let us pursue integrity. Number two, if you're writing notes today, as I challenge you and encourage you today, Father, special number two, godly dads are intentional. Godly dads are intentional. You know, a lot of this generation, this time, mga kapatid, we just live our lives based on what we want to do. Alam mo, pag na, na, marami mo kinang sa mga tatay, lahat po ng tatay, I believe this, all fathers, siguro mga lalaki, we, have whole, we all have projects, tama? Iba, ang project niya, magbuo ng mga Lego. Iba, ang project sa mga kolekta ng mga, ano yan? Uh, yung mga, yung mga Naruto. Oh, may mga, mga tatay na, sa ating church, may mga nanong-collecta niyan. Amen. And I'm not condemning that. You know. Uh, nanong-collecta ng Naruto. May dito, nanong-collecta ng isda. You know. May mga, may, may, may. We, I, hey, listen, tumawa kayo, hindi kasalanan niyan. Amen. I mean, it's how we are. You know, bawat tatay, may project yan, may gusto yan gawin. But I've written about projects bilang tatay myself. Pag hindi mo inintensyong matapos yan, hindi matatapos yan. Di ba? Totoo naman sa itong buhay yan eh. Ang isang bagay, basta ginawa mo lang ng ginawa mo lang, pero wala kang intensyon at hindi mo pinuruso yan, hindi, hindi matatapos yan. Kaya sa'yo ngayon bumaga, practically speaking mga kapatid, 
We're going to have integrity in life. Not only we want to pursue it, we want to be intentional about it. I always tell people, why do you do what you do? Something to ask yourself every day. Why do I do what I do? Have you ever asked yourself that? Ngayon pumaga? Ba't ko ginagawa yung ginagawa ko? That's a good question to ask. I tell people, mga, Panginoon, pagpalain mo ko, why? Panginoon, bigyan mo ko ng ganito, why? Panginoon, increase me sweldo ko, bakit? If you ever ask yourself before you ask anything about God, for, from God, why? I like to have this course, this subject, this career, why? I want like to be involved in this kind of thing, why? Miskit na talong ko sa mga, when I do a lot of counts, especially alam niyo, sa law enforcement, sa PNP, pag kami dinadala sa akin to, you know, for, for some kind of reflection and gano'n, so tatanong ko, ba't nagkaganyan ka? And kaya nga, lagi siya sabi nun sa, <laughs> sa sabi ko sa kahapon kay RD. Ito RD, alam mo, lahat ng mga problema ng mga police na policemen, pag dumating sa akin, ang una kong tanong, bakit ka nagpulis? 90% ang sagot sa akin, para sa pamilya. 90% para sa pamilya. Kaso sabi ko, eh, 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 eh yun pala eh, eh, bakit nung naging pulis ka, nagkaroon ka na ibang pamilya? Hello. <laughs> And they were, ah, sabi ko, I'm not judging, I'm not. By all means, yeah. you know, uh, when I say this, I, I don't try to condemn people, I'm just trying to make you think. Can I ask you, Bumaga? Why do you ask why you ask? Why do you do what you do? And I know in this world, mga kapatid, we're not, we're not exempted from a lot of things. A lot of dads, I assume, ngayon pumaga, I, I presume this morning, you'd work, you do things because of your family. Because of your children. But I pray, ngayon pumaga, not just you're a good dad, you're a godly dad. You do things for God. Alam mo, naluha ko rin yung nakaka-forsake minsan, ginagawa mo sa mahal mo sa buhay, pwede ko niya-appreciate. And that's right, that's, that's a fact of life. But I'll tell you what, you do things for God. The Bible says, mga kapatid, everything you do for God, it is all counted in heaven and there's always be a reward. We should be intentional. Godly dads, mga kapatid, does not only pursue integrity. Number two, godly dads are intentional. Number three, are you with me still? Say amen. amen. I'd like you to open your Bibles quickly on the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. And get the last three points from it. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. And when God Magabuda established the family and go, the nation, government, he was talking to the children of Israel. And Ma, he was specifically talking to the fathers. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 5 to 7, Magabuda, in your Bibles, you're going to see. And we're going to read together. If you're there, I encourage you to read with me. As you turn your Bibles there, fathers, mothers, parents, I'd like you to highlight this verse. May it encourage us, remind us of our role, God's purpose for our life. Not just as fathers, but as parents to our children. Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse 5 to 7. If you're there, follow me. Read, let's, read, read, let's read together. Up to verse number 9. Together now go, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And this word which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and that thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. I like it on something, Ibumaga, before I give you the number three point. But if you look at verse number seven to verse number nine, God specifically tells not just the parent but the father what to do intentionally in his life. 
From the very beginning, mga kapatid, when, when God spoke and when God uh, talked and established the homes and established the families, mga kapatid, and before government man was ever established in the book of Deuteronomy, God reminded the parents, especially the fathers, what should be our intentional living each day. What do we need to do? Sabi po ng Bible, if you could your Bibles, from verse number 6 to verse number 9. What do we need to do? Verse number 5, these things should be in your heart. 7, you shall teach them diligently to your children. The Bible says, mga bad, you should talk of them when you sit down in your house, when you walk with them in your way, when you, when you lie down, when they ro ro rose up, when they wake up. Verse number 8, you shall bind them in the the, the, in, in, in the sign of thine hand and they shall be as front that between their eyes and I know there's a historical there's a cultural thing there every every uh, eastern people mga kapatid meron silang marka rito they have this thing there and if you talk about that and we teach that ngayon pumaga those are really God's commandments the ten commandments that's literally put in their hands in, on their head But the point kay Bumaga is this. Why would God tell them specifically what to do when you rise up, when you walk with them by the way, when you make them lie, when they wake up every morning? These are intentional. Why? And what is that intention? The verse we've read, verse number five. Verse number, verse number five. What's that? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. The heart thy soul, thy mind. Every father in Ibumaga have the responsibility to be intentional. Specifically to what? To make that intention that every day in your life, with your children in your house, to make sure and have the influence that they love the Lord. So number three, if you're writing notes in Ibumaga, godly dads are Passionate about God. Every father, every dad that wants to live with integrity always is passionate about God. Some of us are passionate, mga pastor, ang balaki talaga, ang mga tatay, hindi talaga yan emotional. Nakikinig ako. Kaya hindi mo ma-passionate talaga yan, pero hindi yan showy. And so I was listening, and bigla ko naalala, parang hindi totoo yun. Kasi nung nanalo yung Miami hit ba yun? Ha? A Denver Nuggets. Nakita ko yung ibang mga member natin dito, abay passionate eh. Tama? Para hindi ako naniniwala mga kabay sa bisis sa kultura natin. Na yung mga lalaki, mga kabay, hindi halata yung pasok kasi nga mga lalaki tahimik, hindi emotional. Pero pag sports, emotional din eh. Pag nagbabasketball, mga kabay, nasanggi mo lang. Oh! Pag naka-three points, ba'y nagsisisigaw. Naglalagay ng kung ano-ano. Pagka-favorite yung team nila, naghahanap ng t-shirt, yung number ng kanyang jersey. Mamimili ng sapatos yan, yung favorite niyang sapatos. Kasi passion niya yun eh. Kasi si Michael Jordan. So I think naniniwala kayo na hindi totoo na mga lalaki hindi passionate. Umimi naman kayo matatapos tong example ko. Iba passionate sa sasakyan. Passionate sa motor. Amen. Umimin kayo, hindi kasalanan yan. Totoo yan. Wala namang masama dyan. Walang maging masama. Maging passionate kayo mga sa motor nyo. Maging passionate kayo sa sports nyo. Maging passionate kayo sa hobby nyo. Maging passionate kayo sa aso nyo. Amen. Maging passionate kayo sa ano. Walang masama dyan. Ang masama dyan. Passionate ka sa lahat. Pero hindi ka passionate sa Panginoon.
Passionate ka sa lahat ng bagay, pero wala kang passion sa Panginoon. Because the first thing that God told every man, every father, is to be passionate about Him. And listen, I'm gonna go in, going somewhere. You know why? Because if you're not passionate for the Lord, don't expect your children to be passionate Amen. with the Lord. Kung hindi ka masunurin sa Panginoon, huwag mong asahan yung iyong mga anak maging masunurin sa Panginoon. Kung critical ka sa mga bagay ng Diyos, huwag mong asahan mga kapatid na ang anak mo ang tingin sa Diyos at sa gawain ng Diyos ay pagmamahal. And I say this lovely as your pastor Ibumaga because I've seen a lot of good families destroyed simply because we have turned and the fathers have turned their passion away from God and to another thing in their life. Godly dads are passionate about God. Alam niyo, nakakalungkot yan mga kapatid. Pag ang tatay pa nagahad lang sa kanilang mga anak na maglingit sa Panginoon, nakakalungkot yan. And I'm just preaching straight mga kapatid not to hurt you. Because if you're going to live a life of integrity, it will always be that there's a father that is passionate about God. Number four, if you're saying amen. amen. Number four, godly dads are not just passionate about God, they're passionate about their family. I always tell people, my, the things, if you ask me, what, why do I do what I do? Because number one, I love God. Number two, I love my family. Period. Amen. Amen. And I'm saying, I'm the perfect father, no? I'm always trying to pursue things in my life. But if I always ask myself, my, why, why do I do what I do? Why would I do this? And I always ask myself, if it's not for God and my family, I would not do it. You know why? There's a danger doing it when it is not for God and for your family. Somebody said, somebody said should say amen. But the Tagalogin could help us all. When you do something, not for God and for your family. Let me warn you, there's a big, big danger ahead of that. When you try, mga kapatid, to decide on things, you've never thought that, why do I need to do this? Is it for God? Is it for my family? Then I would tell you, Pumaga, there's a danger doing it. And you say, I'm going to do this for myself. Mahabed, that's a big, big danger. I guarantee you, the moment you think that, the, that moment, Mahabed, your integrity will be coming to a big, big landslide. Parang tahimik kayo. It's all 20 minutes. We dads who have integrity, we have Christians who need to have integrity. And godly dads are passionate about their family. Mga uh, the family, very important, is challenged by society. Challenged by mga uh, lifestyles. Challenged by our standards of morality. Challenged by the opinions of others who are living, mga uh, outside God's design for family. And it is sad, mga uh, that if we come to church, we know the Lord God and we have the Word of God. If we have failed and we have uh, forgotten why we're here, why God saved us, not just to serve God, but to raise godly families. Amen. We're just excited, mga to raise intellectual children. We're not just here, mga to raise children, mga who have Medal of Honors. We're not here, mga just to raise children who have professional careers and have professional credentials. We're not here, mga just to raise children who make money. We're here to raise children who are godly, who love the Lord. Yeah. Pastor, why? Well, if you don't see it, mga if they become the person that they can be, maybe they're going to be the most wealthy person, most integral person, the person who has everything in life. But if their life is away from God, that life will be a life of misery. 
A life, mga bad, would be a life of problems, of pains, of regrets, of guilt. Kaya minsan nakakalimot na kayo, dekado makalimot mga pagkristyano ka, na nabubuhay lang tayo para lahat ng bagay na material, na limutan natin ang pinakamagas sa bahay, spiritual. Material po'y nawawalan, nananakaw, pinag-aawayan. You know, uh, the other day, I don't know if you're here Wednesday night, got a good friend that came to me and asked him for me, man, he, he has everything, but his family is broken. Mga budid, you might think money is going to solve everything. My friends, money will not solve your marriage. I've seen people in church, mom, they have nothing, but they're happy. I've seen people in church, they have everything, but mom, they're, they're sad. They're miserable. Godly dads, mga budid, not just pass about God. You pass about your family. In closing, if you say Amen. Parang mahina. In closing, if you say amen. amen. Godly dads are passionate about the gospel. Amen. Look at that verse in Deuteronomy, mga kapatid. Sabi niya, you shall teach your children that they love God with all their heart, their mind, their soul. How do you do that? Tell them about God. The best person that could teach our children about God is the Father. We have so much also forgotten that in our church, sa mga panong ito, that we allow our wife to deal with our children with things spiritual. With the notion, mga kapatid, that because I'm a father, I'm gonna deal with the things of practical. Work, provide, food, money, Kaya nga sa Sunday school, ikaw na mag-pray, ikaw na magdala sa mga bata sa church, uh, ikaw na manalangin, ikaw na mag-counsel, ikaw mag-devotion, kasi ako'y busy. And I know how that is, mga kapatid. I have to tell myself many times, you know, and you know, hindi ko din yung naunawaan, mga kapatid, uh, it's really hard to be a pastor. Because you come to church being a pastor to people, you go home, you just want to not talk to people. And my son would know that many times, this is Maron. You know, sometimes my tendency is to go home, I want to rest, I want to sleep. I don't want to talk to anyone. But I always tell myself, mga kapatid, when I leave church or I leave my work outside and I go home, mama, that's the greatest work in the house. The greatest person that I need to talk to is my family, my boys. You know, when I was starting ministry, mga kapatid, and we're doing a lot of things. We're trying to get things done and trying to build a ministry. I hardly talk to my boys. They're very, very quiet. But I've learned in life that life is fast. I was looking at the Bible. Sabi ng Bible, says, when they lie down, mga mga anak nyo ay nagpapatakin pa sa inyo bago matulog. Kukumutan nyo. Kasi yung kumutan nyo, kwentuhan nyo, kantahan nyo. But take the time to lead them to God. Pag naging 16 na yan, naging 70 na yan, mga kapatid, hindi ka napapansin din yan. Amen? Yung mga anak nyo na mga bata, mga tatay dito, mga kapatid, yung anak nyo, lagi nakakapit pa sa inyo. Walk with them, talk to them about God. When they wake up and they see you, mga kapatid, you know, go there and mahalik pa sa inyo, good morning, daddy. Pag 60 na yan, mga kapatid, 70 na yan, wala na yung good morning, daddy. You come down to you, tell them, hey, let's pray. Morning na. Sabi ng Bible, when you walk them with the way, wala pa ng kotse, kaya walking lang sila. Pag nasa sakyan kayo, nasa kotse kayo, mga kapatid, kaysa nakikinig kayo ng kung ano, yung mga anak nyo na ando, nag-PPSP lang o nagko-computer lang, hindi nyo kinakausap at kayo mag enjoy sa sounds nyo. Tell you what, there's gonna be a time in your life that when they grow old, they're not gonna even write with you. They want to write with other people. Take that time to lead them to the Lord. A lot of things you could find here. When I wake up, when I lie down, when I, when I walk by the way, 
Put them at the front of their eyes. Put them in their hands. Well, that's intentional. God did that. Mga may, we should be passionate about the gospel and the best people and the great people, the most important people that we could win to the Lord. It's not other people, but bless God, we could do that. But the most important people we could win to the Lord is our own family and our own children. I always tell people, your family is your first ministry. Your children are your first ministry. And many times, mommy, I'm guilty. I always tell myself, I, I sleep mommy, sometimes. I, I, I cannot sleep. I have talked to a lot of people. I have not talked even to my, my children. You know, I've tried to help a lot of people, but I have not asked my children what their problem is, what they're going through in life. And I'm not saying, mommy, it's too late. I'm saying, mommy, as long as you pursue it, you might say, Pastor, matanda na ako yung aking mga anak may asawa na. Listen, pursue it. Pastor, so, yung anak ko, wala na sa akin. May, may, may anak na, malaki na. I'm my grandfather, I'm my grandmother. Listen, pursue it. Reach out. Dads with integrity. We pursue integrity. We are intentional about that. We have passion for God for our family and for the gospel that will keep us a people a father with integrity let's stand head bowed I close piano playing this morning father I preach what I need to preach this morning Lord I know we are all under the word of God I pray now as we come to this invitation and if there's someone here Panginoon who might be thinking, I have, I have no father like that in my life. Maybe in Ipumaga, there are those who said, I, I wish I could have had a father that was that to me. And I pray today that if we don't have a perfect father, that you, we would know our heavenly father who always loved us and helped us and even though but on the Bible says is their mother, father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. I pray if there's someone here who might have a religion, who come to church, but have no peace, have no change of life, have no hope in heaven. I pray they know you are heavenly father through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today they give their hearts their life and start a brand new legacy and influence in their life. I pray for us, Pagan today. Lord, we, we may have a father. And Lord, as fathers, may we learn and listen and apply this to our hearts. May we have men in this church, fathers in this church, that would say, Panginoon, by the grace of God, I'm going to pursue it in my life. I'll be intentional in everything I say I do in my life. Lord, I'm going to be passionate about you, about my family, about bringing my family closer to you that they would know the same hope I have in Jesus Christ. So I ask today, as the piano plays, in this invitation, speak to our hearts. And may we go home changed by the truth that we have heard. Just let me pray. Head bow, eye closed. People praying. Nobody's looking around. Just me. We thank God for you. Let me encourage you. Somebody will come to you. I would encourage you to go with them. They're going to pray for you for two minutes before you go home. We visit them. Somebody's going to come to you. We like to pray for you before you go home and tell you about the heavenly father that loves you no matter who you are no matter what you've been through in your life and you go home understanding that the greatest father you're going to have in your life is the father that would never forsake you nor leave you jesus christ would you go god bless you god bless you god bless you there's people out at the back still we have people on the side god bless you we visit an amen we just love to pray for you this morning before you go home and tell you not about a religion Talk to you not about the Baptist. Talk to you about the Heavenly Father that loves you. That He gave His Son Jesus Christ to die for you. That you're going to have hope, a new start of life, assurance of heaven, if you accept Him. Would you go? God bless you. Ang ipumaga, I know you might have made that decision to accept Jesus Christ. You might be saved. Say, Panginoon, this morning, I realize as a father, would you help me become a dad of integrity? Maybe you have a father, he said, Panginoon, I pray for my father. Maybe you're a wife, he said, Panginoon, I'm going to pray for my, my husband. 
I pray for my father. That there'll be a father of integrity, a husband of integrity. Altars are open this morning. Do business with God. You did not come to church to attend. You came to church to come to the Lord and allow God to make you a better person, a better father, a better mother. For the Lord Jesus Christ, for your family, for your children. And that's you. You come to the old fashioned bend the knee. The Panginoon, I pray for myself. Panginoon, I pray for my husband. Lord, I pray for my father. Lord, I pray for myself. Help me to live with integrity. Help me be passionate about you. Help me be passionate, Panginoon, about the gospel in the life of my family, my children. Help me to be intentional. Help me this morning, Panginoon, to love my family as I should. You come, bend the knee. God bless you all across this building. Where would we be without the Word of God this morning? Where would we be without a church that reminds us who we are, why we're here, where we're headed? You come, bend the knee. God bless you. Father, today we thank you for our visitors coming on that have opened their hearts and are willing to point on to know you and know our Savior Jesus Christ. Would you bless Lord our counselors in the counseling rooms? I pray for our church, every person kneeling down. Fathers, I say, mothers, but I'm praying for their husbands, for their fathers. Young people, but I'm bending on their knees, remembering their fathers. I pray that we be passionate, passionate, but I'm intentional to live for you. Passionate, but I'm to live for a family. Passionate to bring them to the only stable thing in this life, and that's you, the Word of God. Passionate, but on to pass to our children our family, things that would never be robbed and things that would make them stable and things by all that would be allow them to pursue and fulfill your call in their life. And I pray, bless Lord, our fathers in this church, our church family, may we be the person that we need to be. May we rise from our knees a better, stronger, more faithful, more passionate fathers and mothers and a child of God. And so we ask, in Jesus' name, we all pray. All the people say, Well, amen. Let's stand, let's sing. Brother Ted, would you lead us? Amen. Let's sing together. I love the Lord. Amen. Let's sing together, church, and the first verse now. I was in the valley, I was sinking low. I slipped and fallen, I missed the goal. Condemnation threatened. I cried out in fear, mercy said forgiven, come and fly up here. I love the Lord, He heard my cry, He lifted me way up high, set my feet upon the mountain top. Just think of it, the Lord, the King, the Creator of everything, loves me. If you bear the burden of our sin our life, past mistakes and failures haunt you in the night, you can be forgiven, for God's word is true. On the wings of eagles, you can sing it true. He lifted me way up high, set my feet upon the mountain top. Just think of it, the Lord, the King, the Creator of everything, loves me with a love that won't stop. Just think of it, the Lord, the King, the Creator. With a love that won't stop. Amen. Yes, well, amen. As you're coming today, are you happy? Are you blessed? Amen. Clap your hands. What a joy to be in church. The greatest day of the week, Sunday. And not because, mga brother, we come to church perfect. We come to church, we need the perfect word of God, the perfect Savior. And thank God for a church that loves the Lord, loves people, loves their family, loves the fathers. 
And I pray today we love the Lord as we honor Him, not just with our hearts today, as we give with our hands. Father, Lord, You are the greatest Father we ever have in our life. You know, we may go far, but Lord, just like that's account in the Bible, prodigal son, our Father, you know, always looks at us, waiting for us to come home. And Lord, when we make the first step coming to the Lord, You've said, you're going to meet us halfway. And Lord, I know today that maybe there are some people who have gone away from their life, from their purpose, from God's house, the Heavenly Father. I pray they make that step to go back. And Lord, when we are reminded about that, we are reminded of who you are in our life. You're always faithful, even though we are unfaithful. You provided for us the things that we need in our life, our home, our jobs, our business, our hobbies and Lord you provided us for us not just for us to enjoy ourselves to remember who is the giver of all those things and today as we give as a part of our worship we give and we say you own everything in our life you're the resource and the source of everything we have we honor you you are faithful and we can be faithful and I pray we give faithfully honestly cheerfully nothing more nothing less only because we love you you've done so much unworthy of who we are and so today we worship you with this offering we ask in Jesus name we pray well amen let's give together today amen church glorify the Lord through our giving and let's sing defender
Say amen, clap your hands. What a joy to be in church. All the fathers, after service this morning, go to the Baptist Cafe, grab your free drink. All those celebrating their birthdays, go there. Anniversaries, we love you. We thank God for you. Happy Father's Day. Be here tonight at 4 p.m. for a great rich night, and we're going to have a great time. But before we pray, we're going to ask Brother Ralph De Leon, would you come, Brother Ralph, come here, uh, over here, Brother Ralph. Before we close in prayer, um, has made his intention. He has finally come back from Macau and finally settling here. And uh, his church at Border Gate Baptist Church in Macau has given a letter of recommendation. And so today, we finally, officially, and before I say that, mga brother, he's already been part of family. But today, we welcome Brother Ralph De Leon as part of our CHBC family. Say amen, up your hands. And what a joy to have Brother Ralph after prayer this morning. Shake his hand, welcome him to church, shake everybody's hand, be here at 4 o'clock for a great service. We thank God for you, those of you joining online, our church for happy Father's Day, and we pray today and we see you at 4 o'clock. Father, you have met us today in this place. Lord, there's a great joy whenever we know that you have been with us and you have spoken to us. As we see Panon, people that have accepted you and Lord, your Church family, Panon, has, Lord, made things right with you. Panon, it's a joy. But Lord, I always pray that we would never forget who we are, why we're here, and where we're headed. I pray whenever you come to church, we we'll just come, Panon, to be in church. We are in church, in Christ. And I pray, Panon, today as we leave this place this morning, would you bless the offerings that we have given? Lord, we love you. I pray we continue to see soul saved. Lives changed, families built, the gospel preached, and our people serving faithfully. We thank you for Brother Ralph de Leon for bringing him back to us and Lord into our church family. Bless his family, his life, and I know it's going to be a blessed to our ministry. I pray for our fathers, Panginoon. Lord, may we have Panginoon men that loves you, loves their home, and Lord, lives not just to provide, lives, Panginoon, to tell our children, our family, and grow them into you and draw them close to you. May your protection be upon our fathers. Lord, protect our fathers, our people from people, circumstances, decision that will destroy their life, their marriage, their family, their children, their ministry. And together, may we serve you and love you until you come, until death calls us home. Bless us now with your grace, your goodness as we leave this place. Bring us back tonight for a great service as we listen to our church family in District 2. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, amen. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. You're dismissed. See you at 4 o'clock.